Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And this video is about the VLOOKUP function. This is a beginner's guide to one of Excel's most well-known functions. We're going to see two examples here. We're going to learn it from scratch. This video is for newbies to the function. And we're going to see what that last question, the true or false, what does it really mean? Now, what VLOOKUP is used for, well, it's used for many, many things. But its classic use is to link related information, to look up data from another sheet or workbook and bring it into a list. So for a simple demonstration, I have some names on this worksheet. I have some levels of some kind of status and a price associated with that. Maybe this is some kind of membership. And then I have this table on the right with the level and how much it costs. I simply want to look up the price from the second table and bring it into the first table. And the price is dependent on their level. Typically with a VLOOKUP, you're looking up some kind of unique identifier, some kind of employee number or product code or booking number. Here I'm looking for a word, a color that's associated with a level for this example. So to get started, if I click in cell C2, column C is where I want to bring the prices. And I'm going to do VLOOKUP by typing it in the cell. So I'm going to type equals to start a formula and then VLOOKUP. The V stands for vertical. This is a vertical lookup. And you can see the description of VLOOKUP to the right of the function name right now. It looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and returns a value from the same row but a column that you specify. And then it goes on to say that by default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. More on that later. For now, I'll press the tab key to persevere with this VLOOKUP. So that it prompts me for the lookup value, then the table array, then the column index number, and finally the range lookup. Now the lookup value is what are you looking for? And in this example, I'm looking for this person's level. And that is in cell B2. So I will reference that cell. And then I'll type a comma so it moves on to the second argument called table array. Where are you looking for that level? Now the table is to the right. At the moment, it's in columns E and F. So there are various ways that I can select this table. I could select the entire columns, E and F. That's one way. Maybe looks a little bit silly here because this is a, a, you know, a tiny table. I don't need to select the whole columns. Although if this was a huge table, that would make more sense. So what I might do instead, if I backspace on that, is select the table more accurately. E2 to F5. So column E is the leftmost column the first column of that table, and then I have the price column, which is the one I'll be returning the information from. That's ultimately what I want, I want the price. Now I'm going to make that reference absolute. I did that by pressing the F4 key, so that when I copy VLOOKUP from cell C2, down column C, the table in columns E and F does not move with me. That stays in E2 to F5. A comma will prompt me for the column index number. This is the information you want to return. So I've told it to look for a level in this table array. What information do you want to bring back? Now this must be entered as a column number. And this is the biggest shock for people when they're learning VLOOKUP for the first time. The answer is two because price is the second column of our table array. Column E is 
column 1 and column F is column 2. One more comma brings on to the final argument. Now this is optional. The square brackets around it indicate that it's an optional argument. If we do not answer it, the default value is true. And it's important here that we answer it because we want false. So I can either double click or type false in there. Now you'll see a lot of people type in zero as well. One for true, zero for false. So I could double click false right now to put that in to say that I am looking for an exact match. I'm looking for the specific word red. That's the level of Paolo, our first member. It has to be an exact match on that. It makes no sense to do some kind of approximate match right now. And most VLOOKUPs do have false or zero on the end to indicate exact match. Now I'm going to close off my bracket. Our first VLOOKUP is done here. And if I press enter, it will comfortably look for red in that table array. Return column two, which is the price. And then more importantly, if I click on that cell and copy that to the bottom, only 16 rows, 16 people here. So it didn't take much effort to drag that down. And it's comfortably looked for each level in that table and brought back the price. To keep this demonstration simple, the table we're looking in is right next to the table we're looking from. But please bear in mind this lookup table is typically on a different worksheet. Maybe even a different workbook, but definitely a different sheet. And you're just trying to combine the data from the two or maybe more sheets. There are many other reasons why people use VLOOKUP. It's great for comparing lists, looking for matching or missing items. It's great for some kind of logical work. But this right now is your classic VLOOKUP scenario. Now if I move to another sheet at the bottom called VLOOKUP with ranges, I will provide this file for you guys to work on in the description of this video. On this VLOOKUP for ranges sheet, we're going to do something different to the last argument of VLOOKUP. This time, the scenario is to provide a discount. So we've got some kind of logical work to do here. The discount they get is dependent on how much they've spent. So in this first order, they've spent £109. What does that mean? Well, that means they qualify for a 3% discount because they've ordered more than 50, but not as much as 110. The next one for 195 gets a 10% discount, more than 180, not as much as 220. Now, typically people write nested ifs to do this kind of work, but this is great for VLOOKUP. It can do it much easier. What we'll do is we'll write a VLOOKUP to look for how much was spent in the column of ranges, and return the discount, which is the second column of the table of ranges. So in cell C2, it's VLOOKUP time. And the lookup value, let's do this one a bit quicker, is the amount spent, B2. Comma, where's the table? Well, really, it's in pretty much the same place as the last example. But it could be anywhere, and I could select the columns, I could use a name range, it could be in the table. Right now, it's just E2 to F6. And I'm going to make that reference absolute. F4 key. Comma, the column number once again is number two for these simple demonstrations because the discount is the second column of that table array. Comma, and for the last argument, this is going to be true. We are doing an approximate match, otherwise known as a range lookup, hence the name of this argument, because we are looking in ranges. Are you looking in ranges? True, yes we are. In the previous example it was false, no we're not. The word red is not in a range, but these values are. Now it tells us on the right hand side that if you're going to use an approximate match, the values in the first column must be sorted in ascending order. 
Now if I confirm the true here by double clicking on it, and then pressing enter and copying my formula down, you can see that in the first column of the table array, they are in ascending order. And that is essential. To demonstrate this, if I did click on one of the discounts in the second column of the table array, and if I did go to the sort and filter buttons and ask it to sort the discounts largest to smallest, you can see the VLOOKUPs break as I've now changed the order of column E and it was relying on that. Easy to fix by either undoing or simply to return that back to a smallest to largest order. But I wanted to demonstrate that. It mentioned it when we were writing VLOOKUPs and I've just proved its case. Important for me to mention right now that the previous VLOOKUP, when we put false on the end, you don't have to worry about the order. It doesn't matter what order they're in, the VLOOKUP's going to work anyway. It's only when you're doing range lookups. So I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.